What do watercolour paint, water-soluble graphite, compressed pigment and watercolour pencil all have in common? That's easy, this emu. Emu feathers aren't stiff like other birds' feathers. They're soft and flexible, more like hair, and hair can be difficult to paint in watercolour. So when I decided to experiment with this emu, I thought I'd make it easy on myself and use more than one medium. So in this video, I'll be using watercolour along with water-soluble graphite, some compressed pigment, and a watercolour pencil. I thought that I could do most of the work with the graphite pencil and then use watercolour over the top to enhance it. I chose a water soluble graphite pencil over an ordinary graphite pencil because I knew that I could soften all my pencil lines with water. That was my plan and I think it worked out okay. Back to the beginning, here's the drawing that I drew in my watercolour journal and I'm just finishing it off now. The paper in this visual diary is 300 GSM in weight and it's watercolour paper. I took the photograph of the emu at a wildlife park near Sydney a few years ago. Okay, so this here is an ordinary house painting brush that I bought at the hardware store a few weeks ago. It's just a cheap brush, it's nothing special. I'm just going to use it to paint the splash on the background. Ideally, an old scruffy house paintbrush would be better than this new one. But our old brushes are pretty scruffy. They're covered in paint and they've gone hard. So I bought this new one. So I'm just going to use this brush just to splash some cobalt blue paint over the background. So I just want a few brush strokes here and there, not too many. I'm going to grab a spray bottle just to spray that paint and loosen it up a little. As I said, this is cobalt blue that I've watered down with a bit of water. Now I've got the spray bottle and I'm trying to loosen that paint up. Tilt it just to see if I can get it to move a little bit. It's not moving much, so I'll just put a bit more water on there. And I'll just take this soft mop brush just to take a bit of it off the emu there. Okay, I think that will do. We'll just see how that dries. So there it is, it's dried and it looks better than I thought it would. So I can work over the top of that now. This is the pencil I'm going to use. It's a Derwent Graphitone water soluble graphite pencil and this is a 4B. I've taken the colour out of my reference photo just so that I can see the values more easily. I'll start at the end of the beak here and I'll draw in the nostril. I don't want to work too heavy with this pencil just yet. I want to keep the colour fairly light and I will build on top of it. I always try to be mindful of not going too dark too quickly. The watercolour paper in this art journal is fairly smooth so I haven't got any texture to deal with which makes it a bit easier to draw on. So I'm keeping this colour really light and I'm drawing in that darker area that I see at the front of the beak. And I want to make sure that I leave some white paper showing between the top beak and the bottom beak. Now I'm filling in the pupil. I'll leave a little section of white paper showing for the highlight. I'm going to speed up the next section because it will take too long to get through it if I don't. So I'm just drawing around the eye and I'm keeping all the lighter areas with no graphite on there. 
So I'm just putting this graphite on the medium to dark values. So all the lighter values I'm not touching. Now I've got my mop brush here. This is a Da Vinci mop brush. It's a series 418. It's a number four. I've got some pale cobalt blue here and I'm painting on the dry paper. I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm seeing where all the blue parts are and that's where I'm putting the paint. So it's not too dark, it's fairly light, it's got a fair amount of water mixed into it. This brush is very soft so I'm not disturbing that water soluble graphite with it. This is the same colour that I used for the background. Now I've got some thalo blue on my brush and I'm dropping that onto the cobalt blue in places just to brighten it up. That blue paint has dried and now I'm filling the eye in with some burnt sienna. This is Windsor Orange that I've got on my brush. I'm dropping that in there just to brighten up that burnt sienna. Now I've got water on my brush and I'm activating that water soluble graphite. I like to use this Maestro brush because it's got a lovely point. So I just run the water over the area that I've put the pencil on and that softens my pencil mark. It just moves a bit of the graphite, creates lovely soft edges. I didn't want to go too dark as I said, I just wanted everything nice and light and soft so that I can build up those darks gradually, I can sneak up on them. Just painting over the pupil there with the water. I will come over this with some black paint. But at the moment I just want this soft grey. I reload my brush with water every time I need to. And then I can just keep moving that pencil around. So I did a bit more under the eye, now I'm just moving out onto the beak. Still got water on my brush. Let's activate that graphite. Reserving the white paper where I can. You can see how that water just softens those lines. Some people will use a water brush to do this but I find it just as easy just to wet my brush every time I need to. I like to use this brush as I said because it has a lovely point on it. Moving ahead here I've gone back to the pencil and I'm drawing on some of those feathers. I'm keeping it really light and I'm following the direction of the feathers. Now I've got water on my brush and I'm activating that graphite again. I'm softening all those pencil lines with the water. Here I've got some lamp black. So this is lamp black watercolour paint. I'm painting that over the top, but I won't put it everywhere. At this stage I'm just painting slowly and carefully and methodically. Not real sure of myself at the moment. But as I get further into the painting I can see that it's working so then I become more confident with my strokes. I've turned my drawing upside down here so that I can pull these feathers towards myself. Again I'm not making them too dark and I'm just following the direction of the way the feathers grow. 
So now I can use the water on the brush again just to soften some of that graphite and this layer will act as a base underneath the watercolour that I'll put over the top. So here I've got some lamp black again. This is watercolour paint. I'm darkening around the eye now. I'm painting on dry paper. I'll use this lamp black to darken that pupil as well. I'm finding that this layer of graphite underneath has made my job of putting the watercolour paint on easier only because most of the work has been done with the graphite pencil and now I'm just using the paint to enhance it. Here I've got some sepia. I'm just darkening the top half of the eye and then I'm going to put the lamp black over that pupil. Now I'm putting the lamp black over the top. All the other paint has dried. I'm painting around the highlight that I've left. Now I'm using the black paint to start layering over the feathers on top of the head. The paper's dry here as well. I'm just going to turn my book around because I find it easier, as I said earlier, to pull strokes like this towards myself rather than push the paint away. So you can still see the graphite through the watercolour there. I haven't completely covered it. The graphite is sitting underneath that black paint and you can see it through the black paint. So the graphite just means that I don't have to put quite so much black paint and most of the work has been done with the graphite. All I'm doing with this watercolour paint is just enhancing it and darkening it in places. Back to the graphite now. I'm starting to work my way down the neck. Here I'm following the folds and creases on the neck. I'm using the graphite softly again. I'm not pressing too hard with it. I follow the direction of the feathers with my pencil strokes. I've got to pay attention to where the feathers start. Sometimes they're further in on the neck. So I just keep going with the graphite pencil. Basically what I'm doing is drawing over my original pencil lines and I'm just darkening them in places. I've got my brush now and I'm starting to activate that graphite with some water. As I said, that water softens the pencil lines and takes the graininess of the pencil strokes away. I could have left my emu just with the watercolour graphite on it. I didn't need to put the watercolour paint on it. But I wanted to darken it and I knew the quickest way to do that would be with the watercolour paint. Now I've got some thallo blue watercolour paint on my brush and I'm painting that in a few different areas. So I put it on and then I soften it with a damp brush. There's a few darker patches of blue on the emu that I can see so that's where I'm putting them. I put the paint on then I wash it out of my brush and use my damp brush to move the paint around and soften the edges. Back to the black watercolour paint now and I'm continuing to darken those feathers on the neck. I'm not putting this black paint all over those feathers, I still want to see some of the graphite work. some darker areas over here on the neck so I can put that darker paint in there. Here I'm using the side of the brush because I want to cover that area quicker. I've gone down 
down further with the graphite pencil and now I'm activating it with the water just to soften it all. And now I've got the watercolour paint. It's watery to begin with because I'm not sure how dark I'm going to go down here. So I'll build it up slowly and then I'll have a look at it and make a judgement then. Here I'm going a bit darker with the paint. To make it darker I just mix more pigment into the watery mix. As it dries I put another layer over the top. Here I'm painting a few feathers that are sitting over the top of the skin. I'm using watery lamp black paint here. Now I'm going to start using some of this water soluble compressed pigment on my emu. But before I do, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform dedicated to helping you learn a new skill. There are thousands of classes you can choose from and topics include illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. Skillshare is affordable when compared to face-to-face -face workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. At the moment, I'm enjoying this class by Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. It's called iPhone Filmmaking. Create cinematic video with your phone. I use an iPhone to film all my tutorials. So I'm always looking for ideas to make the job of filming and editing more interesting and easier. And this class covers everything from apps to exporting. I've been working with Skillshare for a few years now and I've published 10 classes with them. At the moment, I'm busy working on my 11th class, so it will be ready very soon. The first 500 subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, back to this. This is made by a company called Viarco. It's compressed pigment and it's water soluble. This set here I have has six earthy colors in it. I haven't used them very often, mainly because I haven't had a lot of time. The pigment is sitting in its own cork holder so I leave it sitting in that because it's quite messy to handle. To use it, I wipe a wet brush over it to pick up the pigment. For my emu drawing, I wiped my wet brush over it and just picked the pigment up that way. As I said, this set has got six earthy colours in it, but the only colour I used for the emu was black. You can also take some of the pigment out and put it onto a palette and then you can add some water to it just to dilute it, make it lighter in colour. I'm going to use this black pigment to darken some areas of the emu. So I wipe my wet brush over the pigment and I can use that black pigment to darken some areas. So I just look at the reference photo and I see where are my darkest areas and that's where I'm putting this. This is darker than the lamp black paint because it's more concentrated. There's no water mixed into it. The only water is on my brush. So I just need to bring some of that hair back down onto the skin here. So I just flick it through some of those areas just to darken them. I can darken up the front of the beak here as well. Because it's not very wet, I've got lots of control.
I'm darkening some areas down here as well. I'm still wiping my brush over that pigment. And I can also paint some individual feathers with it rather than just big chunks. I've been adding a few highlights over the top of the darker areas with a watercolour pencil. I've been using a white watercolour pencil. This is a super colour. It's a very soft watercolour pencil. I'll leave a list of all the supplies that I used in the description of this video. I'm not going to activate this, I'll just leave it dry. And it just goes over the top in some of the darker areas just to break them up if they need breaking up. It's just a quick easy way to add some highlights. It's fairly soft. Okay, so I think that's about it. So there he is, all finished. And that was a lot of fun drawing this one. Thank you for watching my experimental emu. It's good to mix it up a bit and try something different. I hope I gave you some useful tips. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new here because I post new watercolour videos like this one every week. I'll see you soon. Emu feathers aren't stiff like other birds' feathers. They're soft and flexible, more like hair, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> hair, more like hair. <coughs> I need a drink. So in this video, I'll be using watercolour along with watercolour, watercolour along with watercolour. Oh, you're in for a treat. The first 500 subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a two month free trial membership. Yep, you will. Premium membership. Louise, premium membership. The first 500 subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a two month free trial premium membership. I can't say that.